Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a couple of days since I've got any real filming done because we've been concentrating on doing our uh, gallery thing here at the Creative Living Show in uh, Sydney, Nebraska. And so now I'm going to sit back and uh, do some more work. Well, I was doing a bunch of demonstration from painting a chocolate lab a portrait to painting flowers. And I started this on the last day of it and I haven't, I, I just set in some of the mountains and some of the stuff here. And it's just a very basic. And I thought it would be fun to uh, show you what my thought processes are because I want to finish this uh, painting up and get it framed. And I might even keep it or we might put it in our foundation gallery sale here at the end of the month. But anyway, what I have here, what I'm going to be putting in here is this large elk. And uh, he is an elk. You can see him right back there. He's an elk that I did uh, a couple of years ago. Matter of fact, I'll bring him right back up over here so we can see him. So he's an elk that I did uh, a couple of years ago. And um, he was a study. It took me 45 minutes to paint him as a study. And I always liked it. Uh, but And I always wanted to paint him you know, into a painting. Not exactly like Hick. I'm going to have to change some of his colors around, obviously, and, and increase some of his contrast for him to go into this position. But it uh, might be kind of fun to uh, put him in and see see what we do. So I have him kind of beginning sketched in here, sketching in some of the, uh, the darks and stuff. And uh, there's a couple that were a couple of people that were watching that demonstration while we did that in Sydney. So they're going to be happy that I'm going to continue on and paint this. So let's go ahead and work on him in here. Now I have all my colors out. These are the Heritage, again, the Heritage Multimedia acrylics that I use. And this is the Dave's Favorites, the YouTube. All the listing of all the colors, everything I use, brushes, everything is found in the video description. So you'll see that there. Okay. All right. So what I do generally when I start something like this, and this that I'm going to be using here is a number eight fusion flat, and I start by restating or stating some of my darks. So or some really great darks that I like to use are based off the blue, blue and violet, of course your blue and, excuse me, and the red violet, which makes your dark purple. But I do like to have a little bit of burnt sienna in that. And I come in and I, st I initially set in some of the real darks what I call the core darks of the painting. I find those. And I use brush marks, a variety of brush marks and stuff on him that uh, I know will give me some interest. So, and we have some darker, darker moves down here. Now, we're gonna be painting the ground in and around him and put some of that in. We'll have to do that this time before we finish him up. But uh, for right now, we're gonna block him in and so I have this little stream idea going back through here. I want him to come forward. So he has to, you know, even though, though I don't completely finish him until the entire painting is done, he gets the last little bit of touch because he is going to be the center of interest in this painting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start him in now. So... That gives me some nice core darks. I know where his eyes are going to be. This is off just a little bit. You know, I painted over some of his antlers and stuff that I drew. I'm going to have to dry those again. And um, and uh, so, but we can do that. We're, we're professionals. We can do that, okay? So I'll just make sure I have a couple more of my core darks in. Maybe a little more burnt sienna in here. So you see a slight, I don't know if you can see that really well there, but there'll be a slight tonal difference there between the two right there. And um, then I'll look up. Now, I'm, you know, I'm going to be revisiting this. So that's the good part about this. I'm going to revisit it. Let's go up. Let's, you know, usually what I do if I'm doing an ala prima or something like that is I work a half tone up. Now, sometimes I will put on like my core darks and then you'll see me in other paintings jump up here and then create what is called a half tone in between. So, but I'm going to step up maybe to around a value four. So maybe some uh, burnt sienna, some yellow till I get right up about where a value four. So if it looks slightly lighter on there, that's your value four. So I'll come around into a few areas that I know are going to be kind of like this value four right in there. And, uh, I'll just put a few marks of this color on. 
this will be the side, maybe the side plane of his of his cheeks and stuff here. Okay, and uh, maybe this little line right here, which is the flat of his of his head here, which is going to be very important for making his head feel nice and white. And what you do, what is so very important, so very very important to the painting is that you want to make sure that you find the right calligraphy. So I want to give width to his head, so my brush mark is going to go across. Now, a lot of times, like when I paint the you know animal portraits and stuff, and I always recommend, as you're an artist, that you do some animal portraits because the motion of the hair, the hair, the way the hair goes, helps you start to learn to see what is happening in... Uh, you know, in a particular element or how you're going to be able to put those brush marks onto those elements. So, you know, painting any kind of wildlife or animal or where I like to do is like dog portraits and stuff. They really do help you see where uh, some of these elements just might be. There's a little bit more dark right in there. Okay. So now I, I'm, I'm expressing some of that half tone. Now there's a real grade here. So this is a, a cast shadow. So light, um, when I painted him, I put light coming in this direction here. And uh, so it, uh, matter of fact, let's, where's my little board? I should raise that up a little bit for you guys here so you can get a better thing. And we'll reset some of those other things there too. Let's see if I can get that to stay. So it's almost, almost at the same point as he is over here gives you a better view of what it is that we're doing here. And so <clears throat> what I what I have here is light is coming in on this side, basically from his backside. This is a cast shadow on of his head onto his body. Now, when I originally painted the mountains and stuff up here, I thought, oh, I'm going to bring light in from the, the right and then shadows to the left. And I started to do that. But I, I have these just basically set in I do not have them finalized at all and so if I left it like that in this I'd have two different light sources because they're opposite so I am going to rather than change the elk I like the elk I'm going to paint him a little different but I like him and so it's just real quick and easy to change some of those light sources up there and I'll bring it in the light the way I think I should have it so we'll do that but what that means is these are cooler so if I'm using this color over here, which is nice and warm, what I need to do is gray it down, cool it down. And violets are always really cool. And so any of your violets here, these cooler violet colors, you just add that to this. See how it grays it? And it's also going to cool it. And that becomes wonderful colors right in here, especially this with this first go around, because we're going to paint this a few times. We'll put some of that nice shadow, little bit cooler color. And you, you know, it, it's close to what I have there, I, you know, but uh, I could use a little bit more, but it gets, gets us close. Now, also, as I start to put some of this on, my eye is going to start shifting smaller to see smaller details. And I can see one right now that underneath that chin, there's that darker mark. And I want, I'm going to go ahead and put that in because that helps lift the chin. So... Sometimes when I see those real core dark shadows, I'll miss them the first time through. I'll go ahead and add them if I see them because we're going to need those, especially when they start to shape the face and stuff like that. So, And his face, like I, I told a bunch of them, you know, in the painting demonstration, is always a little bit of a block. So I always start in some of his nose and stuff like that as a little bit of a block. So... Basically, coming down the side plane here, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. I don't know if I have that particular size. Yeah, here's one that will work. So this is uh, down to a number six here. And I'm going to use some of this right now just as a real quick block in because this would be the shadow side of him right here as a real quick dropping in some of this shadow tone here right in there about right up in this, that would be the center part of his nose and the, the apex of the light. So this would be a light, this will be coming into shadow. So I'll push that in. I could go a little darker with that, so I'll just add a little more violet. 
And we want to use a downstroke because this is setting the side plane of his face here. So a downstroke right there. And that will help narrow his face and also give the right uh, contour to what it is that we're doing there. And I'll bring this shadow and this cooler shadow together right in here for right now. Okay. And that looks pretty good. A little bit of light. So let's just lighten this up. Maybe I just added a touch of yellow, touch of white. Sometimes, and, and it's always good, and I always say this in some of the other videos, I don't always mention it, so it's good for you to watch all the videos. <laughs> but there was a, there's a, a lot of artists, a lot of colorists that believe that whenever you add the white, you add a yellow because you're warming the light, that you're coming into the light. I don't always do it, but it's something for you to put up here in your toolbox. If something's looking off, you may need to warm that color. Now, I, there's instances where you don't, but I'm just telling you, this is, an, you know, it's one of the things I think about when I start to add white. I think about also adding a little bit of yellow because that is important into the, uh, into the painting. So there's a touch of a cooler shadow mark right down here which this part of his this part you know of his uh, eye socket sticks out and so it is going to be a little bit cooler there right there uh, maybe we'll put a touch of this across the, the front there just like that now let's uh, let's come into his body here and I'm going to I basically, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through my painting here. I want him to be almost white. So I want him a little bit lighter than some of the colors I see there. Now, when I paint elk, one of the most basic colors I use is burnt sienna, yellow, and green. These, this gives you a beautiful grayish color that just it just makes beautiful elk colors. And I'll get a variety of tone by yellowing it sometimes, greening it sometimes, and taking it more towards a sienna color as well. So I'll vary that. But we're going to start out basic here. Pretty much, let's get some of the larger shoulder in here. And I will use a variety of marks here because he has this big shoulder muscle that sits right down here. And so I want to use kind of a variety as I'm putting that in right there. And I can tell right away, yes, I'm pretty close to the color I used there, but I want it to be a little bit lighter. Okay. Now, right back to what I said earlier, if I go lighter, what do I do? So I'm going to pick up a little bit of light. I'll drop here, maybe even move towards my yellow and I'll add a little yellow, sometimes even a little bit of these powerful guys because that's the, the light. But we have to remember, too, that only part of him here is going to hit this light. Maybe this front forward shoulder here. It depends on how much light we show into the painting. We, we will want a little bit of a shadow, so sometimes I'll blur off the edge here like this and see how it allows some of that shadow to come through there for rounding, because that's going to get him nice and round. But I do like some of my other marks that I have here which are going to help that shoulder come forward. And I'll just leave them as marks for right now, just for interest. Let's take some of this light, maybe slight, slightly different. Let's put a little bit more greenish and here, not quite that green, but a little bit more like that. So it's not quite as yellow. It's a little bit more tan. See, it's a little different color. And it's a slight, I know it's really, it, it's small and it's hard to see sometimes, but... That is just a good way to paint the elk. It's changing your brush and stuff up here and changing these tones. Let's put a little bit of that tone right across the top up here. Maybe slide into slide as you get up towards that shadow of him there. Maybe a little green, a little burnt sienna, a little darker. This is how I love to paint. I constantly start to just take change the tones and just put in small marks of tone. This is what really starts to shape him up and you start to get this beautiful and it it's uh, one thing you know you've seen me say this before to you guys okay John Howard Sandin and we lost him this last year he was such an amazing portrait artist and his book 29 steps to creating a portrait um I've learned I, this it's just such a great book it should be part of your library but 
uh, he, he said, what you do is you initially set it up anything. It doesn't make a difference if you're painting a portrait or you're painting a lake. You set up a mosaic of tones first. That is basically the interest of it. And then you come in and you start to particularize and start to analyze and refine those tones. That's what painting is. And it is so very true. And I so very much agree with him. Of course, he's much, much, much better than I am. And, but he is, uh, you know, a true, true master. And uh, he, uh, uh, his thoughts, though, that's what I just love reading, his thoughts on painting. And because uh, I learned so much from that. Now, I'm going to gray this down just a bit, a little more green and burnt sienna. And I'm going to start some of these. See, it's a little bit darker. And see, for this, because of that that uh, simultaneous contrast, which is something that I've told you many times in many videos, I will have to put some background in. But I want to get some of this rounding in, and we got to get that shadow in. But you can see some of the gentle changes and stuff of his tones. We're going to get more burnt siennas and yellows. Let's bring that right back down here again. Maybe a touch of green in that. You can see, like on the rump of the horse, I'm gonna. This is open medium. This is that Dervan was open medium, and I like it a lot of times just because I like how it feels in the brush when I go to paint this. It's a little slippery. Now I got him a little squared off here, so I'm gonna round him up a bit here. But we'll put that big rump stroke in there, like that, maybe and very, maybe a touch more green. And it may look a little too green on there, but when you put it into the painting here, it might be just right. So we'll push that. Now as we get down to that shadow, we add some violets, right? Let's get some of those violets in there, right down in here. Get some of that darker, and that violet will get that cooler, see? So we need to get that violet here. A little bit too much blue. That thalo is so powerful. So we get that violet, we get that green, we get that burnt sienna. The, burnt, the green grays the burnt sienna, the violet cools it down, okay? And let's just get a few tones, strokes of that in there, into that area, maybe a bit darker here, up this side of the leg here. And I'm gonna leave some of these, just some real marks in there right now, nothing perfect. Because I'm not sure, I'm not sure how I'm going to paint any of this other stuff yet. I'm going to develop it. And uh, so as I develop it, I may, you know, change my mind on how I'm going to paint certain things. And so I don't finish anything right now, and I leave myself lots of possibilities. Now, this is a little stiff, so I add a little, when it starts to stiffen up on your palette, just add a little extender to it, and you'll get a better working of the color. And let's go with a little bit more of an orangey right up here, right up through this area that I have on him. And I'll come back. So see, I paint that tone in. And yes, I used too much of that tone. So I'll come back and I'll touch through it again. And kind of, you know, you're kind of following the calligraphy of a barrel. You want to get his, his uh, body in here kind of round, roundish here. So... We'll put some of these marks in that kind of round him up a bit here. And so we'll work a little bit darker right down here. We can see we need a little more dark. But see, it's, and I tried, you know, I can push like this and that really blurs the edges and softens him off. But I'm, I'm not sure just how much I really want to do in this painting because even though I use this, and this is my, and Dirk, you're painting this too. Oh, yeah, I see I mentioned your name. He watched me paint this, and I challenged him to go home and paint this. Um, you're painting this. You know, we're all going to have slightly different techniques and slightly different brush calligraphy and the way we approach it. But there are certain things that we look for in the lights and the shadows and all of that kind of stuff. And there's a thousand ways to answer the questions in a painting. And so uh, here, what I want to do is I want to leave some of these marks, okay, and 
I don't want to blend them off too much. I want to leave them because I'm not sure just what I'm going to do here. And marks are what causes something to come forward. So let's just take some of this group of violet. Let's take some violet and some white and some of this. It makes this real lighter kind of grayish color. I'm a little bit too purple, so I could add just a touch of green and burnt sienna in that. Just a little bit too much, so that's a better color. This will be the shadow that is going to come here, the cast shadow from his head right down here and up and over this shoulder and into that area there. So that's the cast shadow. Now I'll just take that edge off, but I left that edge pretty distinct there on that particular part of painting. Now it could have a little bit more greenish into a little, some of this, and I don't like to paint one large area like that with one tone. So I like to, you can just see a little bit of breaking it up, and that's what I like to do. Just to break that up. And let's go back up this way, put a touch, that could be a touch darker touch of this right down in here for the side of his neck here let that come down and back and forth a little bit more of my darker color burnt sienna blue touch of the violet here I hit some green there too you can see so I'll move over here to this side here that's that's actually a nice variation of the tone let's put a little bit of that in a little bit different We'll drop some of that in here. So you can see I just start blocking him in. Let's go back up here to our lighter and back up over here, my warmer yellows and stuff. As we get up towards the top of him, anywhere up in here towards the light, we'll get more yellows, a little bit more green in there. Okay. <clears throat> and I need to build up that rump a little bit more. I like how I have it on the last one, that big rounding rump here. So I want to build that up a bit more here. And then more into the medium values here of a, the basic, that's too much green. Yeah, there's, when you're, when you brush mix tones like this, which is what I like to do. And oh, and I had a great question from an artist that said, could we just pre-mix a bunch of these tones? and put them in and I did that for a number of years okay and you can do that and you think oh speed and simplicity mix up all these colors I don't do that anymore I like the tone painting like I'm doing now because I'm constantly changing and I have found over the years that this gave my painting more life this brush mix and letting some of these colors not completely mix out but I do see the advantages of it and I did it for a long time I would say if, uh, you know, rather than mix up all the tones, if you want to come up and mix, you know, a, a medium tone and, uh, you know, do that, like a medium tone with your burnt sienna, green, a little yellow and white, there's a nice shortcut. Then you can take and brush mix it a little burnt sienna, a little yellow and, and violet. You can do that. Um, I myself, I love mixing. I love mixing with my brush. I love to see the tones. And so I... I will stick with, uh, you know, doing a tremendous amount of brush mixing. But I love the brush mix. I like to watch the colors evolve. And uh, that's that's where I'm going to stay with, the, you know, this. But, yes, you can pre-mix some to save yourself some time. Certainly, that is an option for you. So you can see, you start to break that in. Now, what you do is you get that, so I'm in a lower tone here. Maybe a little more warmer yellow, orange right up here. Okay, and that's what I decided to do on that one. So maybe a little bit more warmer yellow, orange up there. We'll slide into a little bit lighter gray right up in here. And so what I do is I start to build the rump. And I know my calligraphy is going to be rounding his rump here smaller marks as a color gets lighter as you can see here and take a look as a color gets lighter the area in which it occupies gets smaller that is in color theory the law of disproportionate color and it's a good it's a good thing that's what that's what happens in nature and so that's why we call them you know the highlight strokes are some of the smallest marks on your painting 
And so anyway, I'll come back in here and I'll build this up down his leg a bit, up this side. I'll use some of this to help uh, correct my drawing here that is off a bit as well. That's okay. And I'll start, and you can see he's dried down, so I'll start making other smaller marks, light marks. Don't want to blend that out too much here. A little bit of grade marks, making sure I'm pulling some. Now, see, when I put these other marks on, I'm still allowing some of that other painting to show through, some of the other original marks to show through. And that's the way I like to do it. So building him up here. And uh, let's get some of this down rounding his rump a little bit more. Here, round up. That's a little bit too much there. And sometimes if it's real thick, and if I want to draw, I'm going to draw to correct a, a thing here, uh, to his, his edge here. I'll thin it out with just a little bit of extender that causes the paint to flow better. And you can correct your drawing really easy with it like that. So there we go. That's better. And we'll push this mark in down this side there. And it's going to go quite a bit darker now that I have that on. So we'll go down towards our violet. And burnt sienna. Let's get some of that dark on the back part of his there on that back leg. Going forward a little bit up there in the front. Some of this on downstroke there. You can start analyzing the smaller marks now as well. And that's what I do. I just start putting in the smaller little marks that are the shape forming marks here of his leg. Pulling down. And so I'm building, I'm walking up the scale. But you have seen me on other videos um, do just the opposite of, you know, jump up to the lights and come back. And, you know, there, there's a lot of different artists out there, really great ones that have all different kinds of techniques. And I'm just one here on YouTube presenting some of the stages. I love to paint all different kinds of ways. I don't have just one way in which I paint. And so I like to, in all the videos I do here and all the things I do, I like to show you guys different ways that I have learned over 40 years of painting that, uh, you know, how I approach some of this stuff from the masters to, you know, what we do more modern. And so it is, uh, it's kind of fun. So you can jump to the light and put those in or, or, you know, go right to the darks and then walk up the scale which is what I do sometimes as well. And I'll maybe put a bit of Darulide yellow in this. This will make it a little bit brighter orange here. Vary the tone, you know. So I want some of these other tonal, what I call the tonal strokes here to come in. Maybe I'll lighten this up. So I'm specifically now coming in and changing some of the tone. This is why... I love to brush mix. It's easy for me to add a little Darulite and change up that particular tone in that, you know, in that area. And I, I want to start to concentrate on some of the musculature here as, I'm, as I build him here. So I'm going to want to make sure that my medium values here pull in a little bit to help build this shoulder and that leg. The light values as I go up over here, the light values come on right where that light source is going to be. And then I'll start painting the dimension to them. That's what I'm looking for. Um, what I'm going to do here is take my larger brush and let's take some burnt sienna, some green, gray this down a bit. And one of the things that... Um, you know, as colors come forward in the landscape, we're going to want them darker. So a little bit of blue, but we're going to want them darker. And so I want to just start some of the feeling of grasses and stuff in here. Now, like I was telling everybody when I started this painting, a lot of times, or many times, I will use a pre-toned canvas. In other words, I'll, I'll wash a color over so you don't see the white. But I don't always do it because sometimes I let that, especially if I'm doing a pure 
like Ala Prima, and I want a lot of interest to it, I won't always do that. And so I'll add, it's a little more work, but I like it because it adds a little more brush calligraphy, what I call the calligraphy of the brush through the painting. And see, so you see more of your marks. See all of the color and the marks that you see here as I'm putting through because I'm working on, you know, a, basically a white is showing up through that and it's not toned. Many times if we want to catch a feeling of a painting, we'll retone it. Um, it's like many, many years ago, I had a chance to, to uh, visit with one of the guys who painted all the covers for the Harlequin romance novels, and he got seventy thousand dollars a painting to paint the cover of these these things. And he, I said, how do you get that warm glow, you know, to the painting, to to what you're doing? He says everything is painting on top of red, so red gives you that initial underglow. And so if I am, and and that's very true, and artists do that all the time. So. But if I'm doing something like here that I might want to have a lot of brushwork or something show up, that's why I'll leave it white, and because that white will cask will will come up uh, through this painting and carry and make my marks a little bit uh, easier. Now, as I go back, let's just gray that off, green this off, gray it off here, and we'll start. And we want it mostly gray, so some blue and some burnt siennas here. Get those into this painting here, those grays. A little bit lighter as it goes back, so we're going to want some of these tones in here, a little bit lighter and grayer. And uh, what I will, what I, and lighter towards the back, that atmosphere, it's got to get a little bit of that atmosphere. I haven't added that yet. You've seen me in other landscapes when, you know, I've showed you various ways to add le uh, atmosphere to a painting. It's very important. Um, and so it is, uh, you know, we'll do that. We'll add that atmosphere. So, you know, I mean, at least I will add that atmosphere. If you want to see some of the other parts of this painting, leave me a comment down below. You know, a lot of people don't, you know, they, they ask for certain things and we do everything on this channel by comments. So if you want to see some more of this painting, how I bring this painting to completion, make sure you drop a comment on there because we try to give you what you ask for. And so we have some people that, you know, only want to see flowers, some people that want to see more landscapes, some people that want to see more uh, westerns and stuff like that. We're listening to you. So if you want to see something, you have to tell us. And uh, we schedule we schedule all of our videos and what it is that I paint it all and what we show, you know, what we show is what people re uh, request. So if you want to see it, you have to ask, you have to at least tell us so we have an idea. Otherwise, we don't think people like it and we go paint something else. So, so help us out by, if you want to see something, by putting that in there, okay? So I'm going to, as I come forward, we're going to head into the fall and stuff here. We're going to get a little more burnt sienna, a little bit more yellow and stuff into some of these colors. But I'm going to push some of the blues and atmosphere and stuff like that. Now, have you noticed I changed my calligraphy, the way in which I work the brush? It has changed from up and down here to horizontal back here. And what I'll do is I will slowly bring in a change to my calligraphy here as I'm going back because this gives a nice vertical the feeling of grasses and as you go further back into the painting those grasses start to disappear and that feeling of grasses goes away into more horizontal planes and so that's how you get debt that's how you get a lot of depth to a painting so when I'm up here I want to work very much horizontal excuse me vertical up and down Okay, I want to work up and down up here and a little bit darker in value. So some of my tonal values here will be a little bit darker. I can have some horizontals every once in a while that just help set the, what we call the linear perspective of the painting, which I need. And then my marks, my, hors my vertical marks, I'm going to say that all day. My, my marks get smaller as I go back there. So let's just drop some of that right up in here. Some of that's going to go right up in here. Now, some of this is going to kind of move into him. 
and I'm going to have to use some darks to help him stand out, some darks and lights. But I need to get this in now so I can see it. So as I come forward here, let's go a little bit more dark and heavier. Burnt sienna green. You could have a touch of blue right up in here. But you can see here, and if I slide this over to the side here a bit, you can see that it's going to set him in this plane and all these darks are going to come forward here. I'm just going to thin this out and put a, push in a little more dark, a little quicker right up in here. We're going to put the edge of that river in here and stuff. And But small little vertical marks here. Maybe a little bit of my grays. Soften that a little bit here. Some of those marks and of course we'll be putting lights in as well we're going to put lights and darks and all kinds of stuff going on like you see me doing so many other landscapes this is just looking at the lower the lower key what we call the lower key of the painting okay and then we'll raise the key in when we start to add the other details of grasses and stuff like that this just puts in Dark colors are going to, in this thing, since my sky is back up here, dark colors and everything are going to advance, and the light colors and stuff are going to recede. So, And I'm going to go ahead and put in even a little more dark here. Violets and darks, a little bit of green with that. Nice dark. This would be the cast shadow area of him. That's a little too cool, so I'm going to add just a touch of burnt sienna to that. But I'll leave that other on there. And I'm going to be very casual with this because I'm not done with any of my bushes and stuff. But this will be his cast shadow here that is coming from the, the light here. So we'll just let that sit. Now see that cast shadow that's going to be in here is really going to light him up a bit, make everything look lighter because of simultaneous contrast. So I'm doing nothing perfect right now. I love using the paper towel to get some of that uh, vertical movement in there. There we go. But you, So you get the feeling of his shadow and stuff there. And uh, let's just move that up just a bit more there. Okay, so you get that nice feeling there of that of that shadow and stuff of him. And, of course, he is, it's going to, uh, you know, it'll get to darkness and stuff like that. You really kind of have to squint a little bit to see where I'm going. But it's kind of good for you to see that all of this will, will paint out and soften into lights, lots of other trees. And, uh, you know... And I promised Dirk I'm not going to touch that because he sees the bank there. So we'll, uh, um, the, we'll, we'll put some other fun things right up in through here, up in the water and reflections. I've got a long ways to go on this painting. I'm going to put several hours into this painting, several hours. And, uh, and if you guys want to see along that way, you can. But you can see how, you know, this is how I take a study that I've done and then I incorporate it back into my painting. So now that I have those colors on there, I can come back. Let's come back with my number six here. And I can work on him a little bit more. I'm even going to take this darker color that's this right here. And I'm going to start to basically incorporate some of those darks that I just used right into my painting here and use that to help him pop him off in some areas so I want to bring his rump and stuff forward a little you know here I didn't have to worry about too much because I'm so much lighter but now my background is a little darker so he's going to go a little darker so these are some of the small changes that I will make into the painting to bring that shadow his shadow his form shadow a little darker over here maybe break the edges a little bit so it's a little bit lost there on him and uh, this can come out just a touch more and I'll break those edges so I don't leave that that thick edge there and see that causes more of a receding edge and that's what I'm looking for right in there a receding edge here right up there like that Let's go a little bit more burnt sienna yellow into that right in here. And see, it's a little warmer 
here a little warmer tone let's get that a little bit more round and so you can see now I'm starting to I'm slowing down and I'm starting to shape some of him here let's go a bit more yellow as we come forward here tap some of that see I'm working the calligraphy of the roundness of his rump and so and I don't want to paint it out super smooth I just want to start working the form with some different tones a little bit lighter so I lighten that up a bit we'll work a few marks in and towards the end you'll see me when I work this you'll see me create a color put on a mark create a color put on a mark and so I uh, and I like to do that and We'll work this bit here, this back part of his leg here a bit more, and go back down to some of that dark, which is a beautiful tone there to help form the back of this leg right in there. Maybe get that, that muscle edge right in here that's a little dark. So I'll just come back right over it with a touch of the lighter color tone just to set it into place there and I could have some of that dark though more dark right back in here so you can see my eye starts narrowing down as I come through again I'm coming through the painting adjusting my marks adjusting my tone my eyes getting a little smaller seeing a few more little things going on and I'm starting to paint him a little bit more into position here of where I want him to be there and right here we'll get the shadow for his tail we'll get that in right there and let's put some of that more yellower mark right up by that there and a touch of the light and if this starts to dry up it's 96 degrees outside and we're running the air conditioning and stuff and of course air conditioning dries the air so it dries your paints out pretty fast just add a little extender as you go and that'll keep them working for you don't forget I always tell my my, my students that want to paint more like the feeling of oils I like the feeling of acrylics but if you want to paint more like the feeling of oils you have to feed your paints every every so often with some extender and that will give you that feeling so they won't dry up on you and let's go back here slightly slightly darker and I'm just looking for the shape of that muscle in his leg here there we go and uh, we'll put in that that back muscle right here again I'll probably end up putting it in again and probably one more time as well <laughs> so it, sometimes you know you go back and forth and I'll get the tone right and then I'll put the shape off and then I'll get the shape right and put the tone off and you just go back and forth slowly refining it until you can't find any more mistakes that's painting and uh, let's go back up here to our light here let's shape up this front leg which will cause it to come farther forward again there we'll start some of that shape a little lighter a little warmer here build this up a bit smaller marks there smaller marks and uh, a little bit of that lightness maybe just change it a little bit maybe even a little dark light yellow here so it gets just a touch of a glow there which would be nice I'll put some of that tone in and see just right over and see so you get this beautiful kind of a yellowish tone going right into some of that grayer tone and that's how you start to build this and there's areas that I'm a little different here than the other one and that's okay but you know kind of like a, the shape of this just a bit but I have I have uh, you know I'm my goal here is to set him into place here and then I'll go 
I'll be coming back towards the end of the painting and really spending some time in on the tones and the marks to make sure I capture him exactly what I want. Now here I have a light to dark real quick. And here you can see this is what we would call a half tone. Do you see it right there? So here's my dark, there's my light, there's my half tone. And my half tone's a little bit more of a brighter orange, which I like. And I created that one from Garulide and Burnt Sienna. And maybe just a touch of white. But let's see what that how that sits in there. It's a little glowy of a tone. And if it glows too much for you, you can always add a little bit of um, yellow oxide. But I kind of like that, right there like that. I'm going to let that sit for a while. Maybe mark a few and look for a few other areas that I can carry that tone, that mark, that will do there, just like that, okay? And... Uh, but we'll do a little back, uh, you know, we have a little bit more shaping here into the, the back leg that we can do to round this rump up here a bit and uh, bring that back out there like that. And uh, he could go a touch darker, which I always head towards my violets a little bit more right in there. And there we go. But again, it's, it's just playing with some of those colors. We'll drop some of that right down in here onto his, onto his leg so we know where that is, so we don't lose that. But I've got to, before I go in to finish some of these areas that are going to be in here on him, I have to uh, get these grasses and stuff in, which, you know, if enough of you want to see, I'll paint it with you to show you. So make sure you leave a comment down there, okay? And because uh, I'd love to show you the rest of this type of painting. This is some of the fun stuff that I do that I really like to do. I'm going to go down to a smaller brush and I'll work some of the smaller tones and stuff in and around his face here. Little light, light cast edges here up and around the value eight or so. So I'm just taking kind of that orange color here. You can green it a little bit, change the tone up a bit, but we're going to start heading up towards a value 8, and that's going to be a pretty good value 8 when it dries. So let's just touch right around. This is just a, I use when I start to do detail like this. This is a number 2 synthetic, and I use the synthetic rather than the fusion. This is the Global Art Synthetic, or Jansen Art. This is our brush. Um, synthetic filbert because it, a synthetic is a little bit more springy in action than a, um, than what a uh, the the fusion brush is these are the fusions they're very soft and so I like those because they handle the acrylics really nice let's put in slightly darker here right to this forward plane of his nose here there we go we'll get that forward plane in and you can see he has even a little darker, some of those violets. Now, getting small like this, and when the painting isn't done, I don't normally do that. So I'm, I'm just going to put in a little bit, and then we'll move on. I don't normally do this much detailing and stuff like what I'm doing right now until towards the end of the painting, after I have most of the stuff in position, because you're going to end up painting it and changing it. And so that's where I, I really like to have, there's going to be his ear right here. There's going to be, this one comes back this way. We'll put some of this horn in that I get to redraw again here. So we'll put some of this horn in here as it's going to go up there. And... Uh, the other one and it's going to come right up in here and come right back down towards up in here right there and again I, I like you see since I had all those tones some of them are coming off a little different out of the brush and I like that as I start to uh, 
you know, to shape up this. Where was I? Right here. You ever do that? You just kind of lose your place on your palette where you were. Yeah, I just lost that. So, but we're going to swing this one out and up and uh, bigger right up in here. And that'll work. Gets kind of a little V shape here. There, okay, and uh, a little back one. So even with the with the horns that I do here, I, I kind of like to draw them with the dark stuff in first. We'll put that extra little back part there. Some of this right up in here. We'll just widen out and draw that in here. There we go. And we'll go up a little bit higher here. And this one curves in, th that one I curved in slightly. This was a photograph of an elk that I had that uh, I really liked. And this one is going to go up just about as high. So we have to go up there. Then we'll push the crossing one in, the other one, maybe the idea of the other ones here, because he's a young one. There, there we go. And then we'll be putting the lights and darks like I've showed you in so many other videos, but this starts to get him sketched in. We'll take some of this with the violet right into our brush. Let's come right in here and put the edge of this ear in. They got real insides of their ears are very light, so we'll drop that in just the idea of that ear right over here because most of it's sitting there to the other side. So we'll just give an impression of that there. We can uh, we can lighten up, just take a lighter gray right here. The light side is going to be on the uh, on the left, so we'll just, that wasn't very good at all, so I will use my, steady my hand. The light side, we'll just put a light and dark side, so those of you that watch some of the other videos I do on painting uh, the animal portraits, especially the elk, I've done several of them here on the channel and stuff, you'll see I put a light and dark and then I start painting it back and forth and back and forth with half tones. That's how I like to paint it. So I'll express where the light is here. And uh, this one is basically going to come right down this side and widen out to that part of the horn right there. Long ways to go on it, but it's a really a lot of fun to put it in. So you can see a little bit about how I add some of this in with this painting, how I'm going to add him in, and how I'm going to develop the whole foreground and everything in here to make and keep him as the focal point of the painting here. We'll talk about the values and, and uh, brush marks and all that kind of stuff as we go through, you know, painting him here. Um, <clears throat> I want to put in just a, this is my, my blue here and my got this dirty brush. I'm going to leave it in that dirtiness. That's from all the ground. I'm going to leave that and this is going to help me tone down my blue. Maybe a touch of violet into this blue. Um, I want to get a little bit closer to the sky so let's have just a touch more violet into that but it's going to be kind of grayed right now. This is not a perfect color. Not a perfect color. It's just a little bit more gray, but it's not quite as violet as that is up there. So I want to get it a little closer. A little closer to that violet up there. Not perfect, just close. That'll be better here. That's a, a better, closer color. It's a little bit dark, but so we'll lighten it just a touch, and that'll be close enough here. Let's take this, now vary the color also, so sometimes a little more blue here. 
And that's the way I like to paint. I like it, the, the colors, I like that mosaic of colors. Um, we're gonna change him up a bit. We're gonna let this just kind of blur together here right now. But we'll work this color in. We'll leave all these edges really soft and lost so that you can, you know, you, if you leave harsh edges, they're really hard to change later on. So leave them soft, leave those edges soft. And you can even make little mistakes like I just did there, touching into that, uh, you know, into his horn there just a bit. I left that tiny bit of light there because I want to bring out this lighter kind of yellow stroke right here out just a bit here his beard kind of and a little bit more sienna and dark here kind of bring that extra little stroke in there that kind of fills up his mane there so we'll start to build that so even though I painted this one see I painted this one in 2019 so you know, four years ago, I painted this one. My brush is different, and uh, but you can still come pretty close. And you know, by the time I get done, I'll come pretty close. But I'll change him up a bit more. You know, there's a lot of detail and stuff in here, and right now is not the time to do that because this is just this whole part of the painting is just setting him in place, and then we'll we'll do all the pretty stuff and more tones and all that kind of stuff coming up and uh, we'll film a few more little steps of this I think would be kind of fun to have in the library make sure you go back through the library of all the videos you know and and uh, find some because I'm you know painting some and matter of fact I you know I did that uh, white tail deer and uh, I have another mule deer to do and uh, some other ones that I want to add to the collection, to the video collection here on the channel so that you can see some of those, the other things that I paint and uh, some other shapes and stuff and, of course, some more animal portraits and stuff. So lots of stuff. But like I say, guys, we do everything as I'm painting, as I'm doing this, we do everything based on your comments so if you want to see something make sure you comment and uh, then then we decide from there what our comment what our response was to a video and then we decide whether or not we're going I paint them but we decide whether or not we're going to film them for you because the filming of it you know you film it then you got to go through the editing of it and all that it takes a long time for our studio to do that so to put those together for you, to put all the camera shots and stuff together. So if you want to see something, please make sure you tell us and uh, we'll get it for you. So here's a little more calligraphy. And again, just working on some of that rump area there to start building that up. And I can take that small brush, though, with some of that light. That would be nice, that light gray there. I can take this smaller brush of this and I can put a little bit of that light that's going to go around his eye here just to start to set that in here. And you can see the other one, see here it's softer. The other one I did over here, the other one, the, the, the final one that's over there is a heck of a lot uh, a more detailed and that will come. I don't do that detail yet. I don't do that kind of detail, but it'll be, uh, you know, a, a more refined, I got a little blue in that, a more refined edge. And um, that's not yet, because that's going to really spark his eye up and stuff when you start doing a little bit more refinement. And uh, so, but I'm not quite there yet. So I'm, you know, this is closer, but it's not what he is yet. And I'm not sure, because I might change him up a bit as we get down into 
Let's pull that downward stroke there to get that side plane of him there. And he, his eye went a little small on me when I started to collapse that in, and that'll make him look a little bit more evil if I, you know, because that mark went right across the top of the eye. So this is not really the thing to do, but I do want to not leave him looking a little too angry. So I round up, push up, and get a bigger eye in there, and he'll look a little better. So I'll have to uh, fix a little bit of that. But uh, that'll get him a little bit better. But you can see some of the initial part of the blocking in. Now he's nowhere near as light. I have all the mosaic of tone I gotta set into some of that area here. There will be lights, light greens, light green yellows that is gonna be coming from through light of the you know, the bushes and stuff like that here that are actually gonna go all the way up here towards that edge here, which is what I'll use in my final drawing and drawing him, drawing some of that light. And you can see how it starts to break him apart you know, so I'll be, I'll be very concentrating on that. If you guys want to see that, I'll show you. And uh, so when I go to do the final grasses, I'll do a little bit more drawing on him and correct some of those edges, both with the grass and with him. But that starts to uh, set him into place. I've got a long ways to go. A lot of stuff to do up front here <laughs> and everything and I just set in just some motion and stuff like that of the of that of him now I'll I'll change some of my light direction which means this is going to be light back up here and a lot of these mountains and stuff I just put in really simplistic with my uh, knife I'll show you some of them if you want to see a few video clips and stuff of it just let us know and I'll show you some of the changes and stuff that I do. I love painting with the knife, and I'm thinking even on him, I will use some of the knife here when I put in like the edges of the shines right like that on those antlers and stuff because the edge of the knife, you pull it in like that, you take that little bead of color that you have there, and then you roll over onto that little bead and you just draw right around with that and it makes just a lovely little edge. And so I'll show you guys more of that on the next one, okay? So there's a real quick one, well, quick, an hour. There's a, <laughs> there's a nice look. So you can see I'm gonna put him in here. Got a long ways to go, but in lots of grasses and lots of mid-tone and everything like that. But um, we'll uh, we've got a good start on him. And I got to put that light back in there, fix that up. Got a little few more things to do, okay? So if you want to see some more, leave a comment down there. Um, this is how you, you know, I place him in. I'm going to take him all the way to completion. I would like to show you, uh, you know, some of the whole finishing and the, uh, you know, of this and how I take this one up more towards a commission look to a painting. Just a little bit more than what I do in, in, uh, some of the the different paintings that I do here. There's different looks and stuff like that. And you need to go outside, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a little bit more in, in into, uh, you know, into a work like, that. come here and say hi to everybody. Come here. Come here and say hi to everybody. <laughs> she always sits here with me. Some of you always comment on my dogs. They're always here with me. And she, yes. And here's the other one. Her sister's right here too. So, um, but this let us know, guys. Thanks ever so much for supporting the channel. Thanks for, uh, you know, putting up with some of the storms and stuff that we had here in the last few months. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the delay that we had in some of the videos. I've got a lot of things coming. And, yes, we're going to do some of that Richard Smith, the uh, um, working, the the, uh, um, the manor paintings that he does and stuff like that. So, um we're going to uh, take a look at some of those techniques and those styles and stuff like that, okay? Thanks, guys, so much for supporting the channel and uh, watching the videos. And let us know what you want to see, okay? And I'm going to continue on painting after they go outside. I'll see you in a little bit. Hi. Right.